Yes. I think you have a beautiful brain. Okay. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody! Welcome to the scariest game I am probably ever going to play on this channel. I love you, Colonel Sanders. And I say this is probably going to be the scariest game this I'm ever going to play because I am terrified of what I am going to find in this game. I've never seen any playthroughs of it. I haven't seen anything and I am terrified. Um, I am recording this on Halloween night, but this probably won't be uploaded until like November, like first week of November. Um, <laughs> I am terrified. Guys. Slap that like and subscribe button and comment below what you guys want to see in the future. I, oh god. I'm just gonna jump right into this. Like, oh. Uh, why does he look so. <laughs> Alright, before we get started, tell us your name. My name is Jay. Oh god. Uh, chicken and biscuits. Okay. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartments. Descriptive. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you can wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Oh. <laughs> Smack that clock up and at him, throw the clock out the window and stay back. I'm gonna throw this clock out the window. You slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> came over already. You might not be cut out for this. Give up us. All right, let's, let's be serious. Let's try again. Okay. Yada yada, we make up with the warm glow of the sun and it's peaceful and serene. We can stay here forever. I get it. We need to wake up. <laughs> Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academ Acad Acad <laughs> say Academia. Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What will you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. I feel like if I allow myself to daydream, I'm going to fail again. So we need to take this a little seriously. Alright, I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist, teeth brush, hair combed. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Jay. Are you excited for the- I should like, give her a voice. And Good morning, Jay. Are you excited for the first day for the, of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm- Because I sure am excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the- it's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I didn't, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents, she's always uh, held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you are the most loving, caring person I could know. You're going to do great. But with university and cookie school. <laughs> Three day only semester. Three day only semesters. Jeez. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl. Miriam has always had a has always had a flair for the dramatic. Uh, this summer she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Dear Lord. Um, should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Um. Let's let's change the let's give her some relief. We're gonna change the subject. It's hard to see Miriam like this, and frankly, quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on her anxiety, 
try you try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer, you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic mystery student who is enrolled at the school. Yeah, that's a little worrisome. Uh, but you'll be fine. Now, what about this mystery student we read about on the school message board? Any new deets? Oh, get this. I heard his name is Harland, and he's an ordinary student. They say he has powers. He ha he's had them ever since he was born. From an egg. An egg? Like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous. But the thing about having powers, it would line up with some other rumors I've heard. Like, I heard he once fought a bear with just a smile. You both sigh thinking about this Think about a student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare to apply to him. Dreamy. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoon out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! How dare! It's Ashley. Oh. Your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but he feels that jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it hello ashley oh i didn't see you there chicken shins hey do i look like cake <laughs> you leave jay's shins alone they are perfectly normal shins oh i can't stand ashley even her name is annoying you know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Feel better than everyone. But, so she named herself. <laughs> uh, if, if anyone here know what's per knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. <laughs> has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Ooh, we got some cake? Ahem, Van Van. <laughs> you rang rang? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley, Ashley and Van Van have just been as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University University of Cookie School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to enjoy, to attend as students. I can't I can't get over the name of the school. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas by now? Or maybe hire us as professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, you, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, you losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What is... Okay. Uh... <laughs> Oopsie, I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily push to pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Uh, could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Uh, so his name... Tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Jay. So, are you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. The, the chicken drawing on the on the whiteboard. What we're doing here? Uh, we're doing quadratics. 
the the square the square root of chicken. <laughs> All right. Um, you stand at the edge of the of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit chatting. That's cool. <laughs> A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium at front at the front of the class of We're being taught by a corgi! <laughs> I'm gonna give a very sophisticated voice. Um now now everybody <laughs> quiet down everybody. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. <laughs> I hate this. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the... <laughs> of the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, Wim begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom feathers filled the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly, someone close the window. And then, he walks. <laughs> Freaking Colonel Sanders! You're immediately swept up in the aura of his new students and his remarkable goatee. <laughs> Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... Well, if it isn't my favorite student, Harlan. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before... Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence, please call me Colonel. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> A hush murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle, of, the aisle of dust. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Oh gosh. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with your really weird insults? Uh, you take a moment to clean yourself up, I guess. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't forget that the order this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Professor Dog steps in the... In... Whoa. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and get some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. This greatest culinary academy in the greatest culinary academy in the world. I suddenly cannot read. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears, there will be blood, there might even be really adorable tiny food. I think I already gave um, a Professor Dog like three different voices. <laughs> and all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sparks and compete in the broom, oh, in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the room and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Uh, hi guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss- QUIET! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're- You're on the fast track. Out of here, young man. 
you sure? You sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. He turned to see the, the student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. This game gets weirder and weirder. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking care better care of- Well, damn, I didn't need to be called out in this game! <laughs> Uh, you never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decided to try to butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Beef treat, rubber ball, or chicken snack? Um, well, considering the fact that, uh, this is, um, I love you, Colonel Sanders, that's, uh, Let's give him a chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles goes wide eyes. Sprinkles' eyes goes wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for new star students. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a, uh, of a coating of warm doggy drool. Oh, that's gross. <clears throat> You see the other students eyeing you jealousy, but pay, not, pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Oh god. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seat to prepare yourselves to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Jane, there's still a seat here. It seems no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. <laughs> two good options, but which one we just... Ah! Sit by Colonel Sanders or sit by best friend. Oh my goodness. Okay, do we do we sit next to the hottie that I guess we're supposed to be going after? Or do we sit next to our best friend that we've known our entire... Was it our entire lives? I don't know. So would you rather want lovey-dovey or chaotic duo? I'm going chaotic duo. I'm sorry, Colonel. You have to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad you have to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders. He has such a magnetic personality. But there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. I wish culinary school was actually just three days a semester. Uh, so you say. But now that Miriam mentions it, that Col Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you settle into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pub quiz! Yay, a quiz about me. An incredibly... 
and surprisingly uh, an incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for culinary life at school keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper here comes question number one if train a is traveling to point b and train b is traveling to point a how important is it to wash your hands before cooking <laughs> what Extremely. I'm looking at you, Pop. <laughs> That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to... Feather. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? <laughs> A comically... A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or a spork. We're gonna go with the spork. That's right. Okay. What food is best for a broken heart? Ice cream. Oh. <laughs> a pancake that looks like a silly face, camel meat, anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. <clears throat> it sprinkles a good boy. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. Yes, he is the best boy. The total score is perfect score, 5 out of 5. Wow, be honest, did you cheat? No, I did not. You look up and see Colonel Sanders that has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Okay. <laughs> Hot diggity, Jay. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow. The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that the school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be your lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks! I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh! Lunch, lunch, lunch! She said, shh! In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. I did the wrong voice, I'm sorry. That must be the smell I smelled! Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath waiting to see. I swear if it's fried chicken. Wait to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but worth it. It's, it's gonna be fried chicken. Is this? It's fried chicken. Yeah. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. His, his contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid recipe, dude? Pshaw! <laughs> nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh... Drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what zinger 
what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, <clears throat> but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I saw something beautiful. I knew, I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body angry language change from bitter to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that she is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like his. She wants him all to, her, to herself. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. I just realized she has chicken on her stockings. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contouring his face as he tries to hold in his pure ex exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now, there's enough for everyone. Please, follow my, my fellow classmates. Dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink, in, sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Whoa. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transport you transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping the drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on the moment. Try to identify every flavor, savor the moment, and everything it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim toward the light. Um, let's meditate and try to identify every flavor. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy, something... Uh, you dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes, even deeper until you find it. Could it be? Ah, uh, you had to block it out. He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. I'm concerned what that's supposed to be. You try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everybody in the room was consumed by the lunch. Nobody noticed that you traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders uh, smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and follows you into and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I can talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef? What exactly was on that chicken? Aha! How bold of you to come out and ask! What? <laughs> it's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants no big deal it's just you and me were talking i can keep a secret in fact i've got some of my own that i'd be willing to trade what's the rush the semester is only getting started we got two more whole days to get to know each other he's clearly not going to give it up easily but it doesn't hurt to be persistent you know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? You got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers, oh god. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use... Secret ingredient! It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, you never would have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And definitely isn't the flavor you've tasted before, so now there are two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. 
uh, but you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared while everyone else is still in the cafeteria. You decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue after I've graduated. It sounds like you got big plans. I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now will be the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Nag him to show your own strength. Wow him with the big idea to add additional ingredients to really spice things up. Be modest and thoughtful. Um, let's be modest. I guess that was the right answer. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Jay. I'm sure you'll be a great success. I know we've only met, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should get back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets in the oven and all the tools and ingredients they should need. What is it? Cooking, cooking wars? What? Food wars? Is that uh, what it's called? Look at this place! It's magnificent! Finally, we get to show our stuff! Wait a second. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I really blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature, adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, you will be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Jay. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Mary Miriam is left standing all alone. Two students, two different students quickly take notice. Oh, I feel bad. Hello, new partner. Beep boop business. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners? I'm sorry, John, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pay for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. What do you want to ask to be Mary who do you want to ask to be Mary's partner? It doesn't look like Pop cleans up very well, so I'd rather her go at Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam would be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop, if Pop has the any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly uh, excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might have, may not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. A basic dish and divide it to steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea? Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Oh gosh. 
uh, a steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even have to cook it. Uh, using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, if octopus is going to blow Colonel Sanders' mind, then I guess we're using octopus. Um, I was thinking of trying something exotic. Maybe a dish that incorporates octopus in some way? Um, I'm more of a down-home type chef myself. What about something that, go with me here, walks on land? Oh, is he mad? No! Actually, there are certain species of octopus that do leave the water. For instance, have you heard of the octopus... Uh, uh, what? <laughs> it leaves the water to hunt for crab. An octopus that walks upright and hunts crabs. Now I've heard everything. The world truly is is truly a marvelous a marvelous place, isn't it? Octopus crab. It sounds like you're describing one of my signature dishes. Are you trying to steal my thunder? Boys, boys, boys. What's with all the hostility? Has the competition been moved up to today? How dare you try and muscle my culinary territory? Nobody better touch a cephalopod without going through me first. I think there's been a misunderstanding. Nobody's muscling through any mollusks. <laughs> we are simply discussing today's assignments. You can cut the tension in here with a chef's knife. Um, which makes sense because chef's knives are usually pretty sharp. Look, we were just talking. I'll happily step back from any and all seafood. You know what? I'm just gonna make mashed potatoes and gravy. I know my grandma's recipe by heart. Keep the tentacles. You began to peel and boil potatoes and try to ex 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 I cannot read that. <laughs> yourself from this thorny situation, but your new rivals aren't having it. I doubt that you even have the capabilities to work with ingredients so delicate. You should probably stick to microwavable dishes. Unlike my friend Van Van, though he may be the man man, I have no doubts uh, whatever, whatsoever that cr about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations with admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you then. This thing that has po positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that if we cast complementary shadows, we fit together like a thigh and a drumstick? It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, and if you don't watch out. And if Jay and Van Van are, so, are both so inclined to the sea, perhaps they should go together. Ashley, are you convincing us share the secrets of my special salt wa saltwater sauce with this novice? I'm disappointed in all of you. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Uh, turn to Col Colonel Sanders. Uh, hunks of hunks in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Uh, she's not really that good at it, so I'm gonna turn to Colonel. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Jay as my partner for this activity. I stand by it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Jay's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. I'm filled with determination. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn, those cute corgis got their 
short but sturdy st uh, stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you have already crushed and boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavors. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps and you know, you know so, you know so well while the, your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand, hold, he's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds this work out too. You reach out and grow hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you are holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world in this crazy world stops. Oh God. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Stop it! If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensils into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping spork full up. You see Ashley with, sinister, with a sinister look. You know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. <laughs> uh, and then without... And then... Filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something! Do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van tastes the drip of mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Jay. We do not waste food in broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato seeds? <clears throat> Van Van rushes back over, cover a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes and gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty. I just realized that's a battle axe. A uh, braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. Plated on a battle. It is a battle axe. Battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. That is I who will have the first bite and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and so I a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike right uh, doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It's already been eaten. Oh no. I uh, left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. I killed him. What? Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. Wait a What? When you look at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being served up and popped through. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost completely back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! The entire class gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. Oh my god. Is he actually dead? The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and stopping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop enthusiasm is trying new things, despite the despite obvious danger has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. 
So you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense. Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you have to go through all that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. He followed Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and a little more than a little and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not big they're not a great representation of my skills. I don't even real I didn't realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you've been developing feelings. Oh my God. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Jay. There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. <laughs> There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, geez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. Are you a rapper? And every day since, I've been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights, we can tell. We should follow our dreams with all our, of our hearts that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. I saw you. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Frick you. <laughs> we're, we're talking about me. Me, me, me. Me, me. I'm the hero. I... I'm just, I'm, <laughs> guys. <laughs> I can't take this seriously, <laughs> guys. I'm going to, I'm going to end this video right here, cause uh, this is, this is something. I am I am terrified of what I'm witnessing. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I'm gonna pick up right back here where I left off. Um, next time. Oh God. Anyways, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Um, make sure you set the like and subscribe button. Also, comment below anything that you like to see in the future. Turn on the notification bell to get notifications every time I upload. Um, this, uh, this is going to be very interesting. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, take care. Bye, guys.